Join me right now on Kumite TV is one of the best flyweights walking the planet Earth. Eric Shelton, what's going on, Eric? What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Good, 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 man. Uh, the first thing I want to get into is UFC 233. You know, one of the most important flyweight fights in the history of the division. Uh, Henry, Henry Cejudo, the champion, he goes in there, you know, smashes TJ Dillashaw. But the part that was really unique about that is TJ Dillashaw trashing the division before he went stepped into the octagon against Henry Cejudo. What did you think about that? And what did you think about the fight and how it ended? Well, you know, TJ's a, he's a confident fighter. You know, uh, he's always been that way. And I, I don't take nothing from him. I, I believe he really believed he could go down to 25 and, uh, and be successful. But, you know, me seeing him at 35 and seeing his body type, I just I didn't see he was going to make it and be healthy, you know, with the water on his brain and everything. Your chin's not just is not there like it would be at 35. That's how I felt about it going into it. And then when it played out the way it did, it's, it's just, you know, it solidified that for me. So, uh, you know, I think he truly believed he would go in there and do it. But, again, man, that, that's a hard cut for a guy like him, man. He's already a ripped-up 35er, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I love TJ. You know, I got to train with TJ, so I can't bad talk him, you know what I mean? But was there a sense of satisfaction when he lost? Because, you know, Henry was kind of protecting the division for everybody. Yeah, that definitely. You know, it, it was it was a it was one of those things, man. It was hard for me because TJ's a, a guy I look up to, you know. But at the same time, I'm a I'm a flyweight, you know what I mean? And it's my family on the line, so it was one of those things, you know. It was a, a you know a love hate. I, I wanted him to win, you know, in my friend zone, but in reality, you know, deep down, <laughs> I, I needed that division to come up and shine, you know. And Cejudo did that for us, so I was definitely felt blessed for that. No doubt. Uh, does a Cejudo Dillashaw at 135 makes sense to you? Nah, no, man. I, I don't think it should happen. I think they should just let that go. You know what I mean? And let our, let our division thrive right now. We got a lot of 35ers that, that can contend for with TJ and a lot of 25ers that can th contend with Cejudo. So I think we just need to let the divisions run their course. It seems like the flyweight division, you know, the talk of it dying down or it being dead, I believe it's over now. Especially when they're signing new flyweights and your next fight is at flyweight was the end of the yeah. la was the end of last year kind of frustrating was it a frustrating time because of all that talk it definitely was man I mean your my life was on the line you know I, I got kids and stuff so it was one of those things you know I'm bust I, I went down to uh, American Top Team to you know relocated my whole family so everything was on the line for me and uh with that talk it was like dang I don't know if I'm gonna have a job in the next few months so you know, I definitely was nervous, but, you know, I always put God first, and, I, and he always keeps me keeps me good. So, you know, I'm, I'm here now. I got another flyweight fight coming up. And, you know, I, honestly, I, I can't thank no one but Cejudo for going there and get the job done, man, to be truthful. <laughs> uh, your last appearance in the Octagon, you got a split decision over Joseph Morales at UFC Denver. Looking back at that fight, what positive did you take away going into your next fight? Well, I'm usually known as a striker, you know. I mean, honestly, I, my base, though, has always been jujitsu, man. And, and I feel I kind of I swayed away from it when I went to my last gym with Pete Spratt. It's more of a striking-based gym. So going into UFC, I felt like I, I, I strayed away from my grappling. But this fight, my last fight, I feel I got to show I have wrestling. You know, I can scramble with the best. And I have striking. So I, it gives people more to think about when they get in there with me, I feel. Being on the wrong side of a few split decisions at the start of your career, your UFC career, how good did it feel to, you know, have one go your way? It was good, man, because I, I do have bad luck with decisions, you know. Um, honestly, I feel I could easily be 4-1 and in the UFC uh, right now, but, uh, you know, things don't always go that way, and now I'm fighting to be 3-3, three and three, you know, and I'm okay with that because uh, I fought some of the, the best in the division, and I've proved I belong, and I feel that's why I'm still here, so... I'm going to go in here this fight, and I'm going to show why I'm at the, I want to be in the top 10, you know, and eventually the top five to fight for that title, man. I'm, I'm making my goal this year to get to that belt. So uh, hopefully this division stays and we can keep it thriving, man. I'm going to keep, keep the excitement coming, you know. You mentioned American Top Team earlier. You moved there. You relocated your whole family in the middle of last year. A lot of fighters, yeah. they can get lost in the shuffle at a team so big. What is it about that camp that drew you there? 
You know, um, I was training at Militage a while back, and uh, ATT was a place that a lot of the guys would go that were in the UFC, like uh, Robbie Lawler would go down there, um, Junior Hernandez, guys like that. So I, I, that was on my mind for a long time, uh, American Top Team. But I had went to a couple other gyms before I ended up ended up where I'm at now. But it's always been in the back of my mind. You know, it's one of the best gyms in the world. It's got and, – and right now it has some of the best flyweights. So, you know, it, it's all in all a good place for me to be at right now. We got Pantoja. We got <laughs> me. <laughs> we have uh, tons of guys, man. It's just Jamie Alvarez. You know, there's my boy Juan. Juan. It's just the end. The list goes on at 35 and 25. So I feel I'm at the best gym in the world with the best with the best team. So I'm excited to see what I can do with it. Yeah, you do have a great mixture of like 125ers, 135s, and guys that go back and forth. Especially worldwide, you got Horiguchi out there. You got Moraz that fights for one championship. It's crazy. Yeah, Kyoji's out here. <laughs> I mean, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. Can't beat it, man. I, I I've never been at a gym with such talent. You know what I mean? So, and the coaches we have too as well. It's just it's ridiculous, man. It's got the best coaches, the best. I don't know how they're able to do it, but they make it work with so many guys, you know. But they they give us all the right, right amount of attention, and you know, it, it just works out. They have a perfect system going on down here, so I'm blessed to be here, man. You mentioned the coaches, elite coaches, crazy talent out there. Who is the crazy. coach that took you under their wing when you first got there? Well, you know, I started off working a lot with Dean, and, uh, you know, he's a busy man, you know what I mean? He's always on the road. He's, he stays busy, man. I, I don't know how he does what he does, but uh, Oompa right now has been working with me a lot, and I, and I respect him a lot. I could tell Conan, of course, the head coach, all the coaches, man, really have showed me love, you know, to when I first got there. I mean, they realized I moved my whole family. So I feel that Jim is real family based, you know, and, and they, they took they took attention to that real quick. So all the coaches showed me love, man. But right now I've been working a lot with Pumpa. Now you got a fight coming up. US, UFC Nashville versus Jordan Espinoza. Were you expecting somebody higher in the rankings instead of a debuting fighter? Yeah, man, I honestly was, you know, but uh you know, I'll take what I, what I can get. You know, if this is going to be the fight to, to bust me through that top 10, I'm okay with that. You know, um, I guess he's coming off two wins off the contender. I was looking to get a top 10 guy, but, you know, it is what it is. The UFC does what they want. So uh, after this fight, this I think it'll give me a little bit of leverage to call out somebody. So uh, after this fight, get a W, man, and go out there and call out a top 10 guy. That's That's the plan. Did you check out his fights on the contender series? Yeah, yeah, I did a little research. I checked out the two fights he had on there. Um, I know he likes to go for that Dars and stuff like that. But, again, I'm at a gym where the guys are doing that 24-7. There's so much talent, man. I'm seeing that anything that anybody has, I, I get to see on a daily basis. So, You know, you fought on the Ultimate Fighter. You fought in that, in that house, in that gym. And yeah. the Contender Series guys, they go to Las Vegas. They fight in that environment. Does it prep you? better for the UFC? You know, I mean, I feel it does, you know, like with the cameras and, and the stuff like that and just getting comfortable with uh, the UFC, I feel. You know, I got to see some of the faces like Dana White and, you know, Mick and all the guys like Sean Shelby. It just gets you a little bit more comfortable. You know, uh, the refs, just being in that environment, I feel, you know, Ultimate Fighter definitely did help with that. Your training camp for this fight, did you jump right back into training after your last fight or did you take a break? Uh, about a week off, took a week off with the family did some stuff but man ATT is hard to stay out of you know you go right back in there and you just back training whether you're training for yourself or, or helping somebody else get ready we, we all pretty much stay active there all the time so you do have a lot of you know high level guys out there but for this camp who did you spend majority of your time working with um my boy Juan I worked with a lot uh there's tons of guys Pantoja Formiga we all bounce around Kyoji uh, you know, some days I work with Kyoji, some days I work with Juan. It just it, it just depends, man. They they put us with guys, you know, based off who's there. So, you know, everybody, man, every round's always tough, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Any new aspects you've added to trading since your last fight in November? Yeah, I mean, tons of stuff. You know, I got tons of different coaches, so it's like uh, now I'm working more with Boompa, so I'm working more of my ground and, uh, you know, getting more tight on the ground. You know, you know, just tighten up on stuff that I already knew that I, I feel I need to touch base back on. And, um, 
you know, my wrestling, of course, we got one of the best coaches in wrestling, Mako. So it's like, you know, I feel everything is, is getting tighter. Everything in my game is just getting better. The longer I stay here, I feel the longer I'm going to get better. So just the sky's the limit at this gym. This is your first fight in 2019. Is the mentality the same or are you taking a different approach this year? Because kind of like the weight is off your shoulders about the flyweight division. Yeah, man, that's exactly it. I feel like this is going to be the first fight where I'm not backed in a corner. You know what I mean? Like most of my fights coming off my first fight in the UFC, I I, I lost that split decision. You know, obviously you're, you're nervous now. I got another fight coming up. I fought. I lost another split decision. I was two and... 0-2, you know, coming in the UFC. So those two fights were huge for me. And then I was backed in the corner for that one. And then my fourth fight, I finally got a win. It's just like, it's always been always on edge, you know. And then with the flyweight division being on being on the, the line, it was like, dang, I don't even know what's going on. So right now, this fight, I feel I finally can have a free mind and train and focus on just going out here and performing, you know what I mean? And and not so much about whether my job is going to be there when the fight's over, you know. I'm going to go in here and and put on a show and actually show people why I'm called Showtime this fight, I feel. You're talented, you're skilled, you're ambitious, but what characteristic do you believe separates you from the pack in the 125 division? You know, um, just, you know, the things I've been through, you know, life and, you know, my, my journey through the UFC, I've already had to go through the rocky part, you know. Now it's time for me to excel, and I'm finally at a place where I can do that. Uh, you know, my family, my kids, I just, I'm so motivated, you know, to give them everything they, they deserve. And and this and this is the place I can do it. UFC is something I feel I can I can thrive and be the champion in. I feel I separate myself from them guys by by just my work ethic. I'm I'm working all the time, man. Whether I'm in the gym, I'm at home working with my family. You know, it's it's always work for me. So I I definitely think that separates me. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people when a fighter moves to a big super camp, they expect instant results. But really, yeah. that is you know. That you can't have that. It's like it. Ta it's a process, right? So I think yeah, that you, yeah. you are speaking the truth about that. It takes some time. You're there. You've been there for a while, almost a year. You know, it's gonna yeah. be. Uh, I'm excited for your fight coming up, man. To see your development. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I feel. I feel like a, a complete different fighter. You know, I'm. I'm confident now. I'm. You know, I believe in myself again. You know, because it's. It. It takes a toll on you when you're losing fights like that. You know what I mean? It takes a toll on your mind and and your skill set. But now I'm finally. I'm back, I feel. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm back and I'm, I'm going to be able to show people that I'm about this and I'm going to get to that top, that number one spot, no doubt. All right, one last thing before I let you go. You know, fighters, they always have their headphones in. You know, people, fans, your fans, people listen to the show, they always wonder, like, what are you listening to? Like, what gets you hype, you know, during training? What's in the, you know, what's in the, you know, on the playlist in your ride? I've been listening to that middle child right now, uh, they got this new song, My Year. My girl actually put me on that. It's it's actually a real good song too. You know, I'm not real big on on the names of songs, man. I'm I'm so I just go by what people tell me, honestly. But Middle Child right now has been bumping and bumping on my radio for sure. March twenty third, UFC on ESPN plus six, Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you for your time, Eric, and good luck to you, man. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one, brother.